It's a great pleasure to uh, be here today and to participate in the launch of this very significant uh, research partnership between ASMI and Macquarie University. As the industry body representing the over-the-counter and complementary medicines sector, ASMI has an ongoing interest in understanding the forces that impact on consumers and the way they use healthcare products and healthcare services. ASMI has been and remains an evidence-based organisation. We are engaging with consumers through our member companies on a daily basis and foremost in our approach is consumer health and safety. We support the highest standards of safety and efficacy in the use of consumer medicines and we work extremely closely with the Therapeutics, Therapeutic Goods Administration which is responsible for overseeing Australia's medicine sector. Now, once in a while, while we have our occasional differences with the TGA over aspects of regulation, there is no question that Australia has a world-class approach to consumer health and safety. And I say that from the perspective of an industry that has millions of interactions with consumers every week in the use of products that touch so closely on their personal health as well as that of, the, of their families. We all tend to take this pretty much for granted. The medicines that Australians use every day for a host of common complaints, for example, colds, flu and aches and pains, as well as vitamins and supplements, people take to stay well. We understand the great trust that people place in the products that they purchase for their health, and we, as the industry body, are conscious that maintaining that trust is central to everything that we do. And that is why this partnership with Macquarie University resonates so powerfully. Its significance is twofold. Firstly, it helps to build the evidence base around the self-medication industry, gaining a better understanding of the value and contribution of the sector to the economy and the, and the community. It also helps to build the evidence base around the motivation and behaviour of consumers. What is it that drives consumers to seek out certain health-related advice on products? What information do they find useful? How do they obtain that information? And the relevance of professionals such as GPs and pharmacists in the equation. The research project which is currently underway will be, crucial, will be a crucial piece of work that will hopefully provide a piece of the jigsaw that has largely been missing. The second key reason why this partnership is so important is that it helps build the evidence base around the whole notion of self-care, of which I want to say a few things, about which I want to say a few things. We are, <clears throat> we are just one of the players in a healthcare system that encompasses a vast array of private sector and government health personnel and resources. Our part in the total health picture occupies part of primary care, where consumers seek medication either through or directly from their GP or pharmacist. But the one thing that everyone in healthcare sector must address is the reality that current levels of expenditure on health are not sustainable. We have a catalogue of reports from government and private think tanks that all come to much the same conclusion. They all point to a rising healthcare costs, increasing and unsustainable government expenditure on health and a system under enormous pressure from growing demand for health services especially due to an ageing population. In other words, something has to give. And it's worth reflecting that as we gather here, just a few days from the federal election, that the unsustainability of health budgets is something that is largely off the radar in the current political debate. Well, you can't blame them, I guess. It's a monumental problem, but it's one that sooner or later, governments, taxpayers, health consumers, health professionals and the industry are all going to have to confront. None of us in isolation can solve the problem of the healthcare system, but in every sector there will be ways that we can consider reforms and practices that can contribute to solving the, 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 the challenge. Achieving reform will clearly entail actions across the broad healthcare spectrum and all stakeholders will need to play a part. One of the questions that the industry has recently begun to ask is this. 
Should the consumer healthcare sector be starting to look at how it can play a role in preparing for a future health system that is leaner, with less government funding and with more emphasis on patient-centred approaches, improved health literacy and preventable illness? And this is where I believe self-care has a role to play. Self-care entails individuals taking greater personal interest in and responsibility for their health and well-being through practices including lifestyle, appropriate use of medicines, diet and exercise. Self-care is aimed at empowering consumers through improved health literacy and equipping them for the prevention and self-management of acute and chronic conditions. At its core, it is a shift from cure to prevention and a focus on activities and decisions that people make for themselves so that they maintain good, a good he uh, level of uh, physical and mental health. If we can keep people from getting sick in the first instance, stop them from slipping into that chronic preventable illness and help to alleviate some of the pressures on GPs, then that surely warrants consideration. The UK has successfully integrated self-care into its health system with quite remarkable results. We know that it is suited to a range of common and minor ailments such as colds and flus and even to some chronic conditions such as pain management, diabetes and asthma. One area that we might explore is the extent to which a redirection of some ailments to community pharmacy could help to ease the burden on GPs and free them to address more serious conditions. A study commissioned by ASME in 2009 estimated that a minor care initiative in pharmacy could contribute to an effective increase of between 500, rather, 500 and 1,000 full-time equivalent GPs, or some 3 to 7 per cent of the GP workforce. It is accepted that self-care will not suit everyone. But there are many individuals and families who are likely to embrace an opportunity to engage with, with their health in ways that will give them a more productive and healthy life. And it's important to remember that, that self-care does not imply an individual is left to look after themselves. Rather, the emphasis is on the consumer in partnership with healthcare professionals, that is GPs, pharmacists, naturopaths, dietitians, and others. So I think the establishment of the ASMI Macquarie University partnership that we're celebrating today <coughs> will lead over time to a deeper understanding of the role of self-care in driving better health care outcomes for Australians and how it can play a role in preparing for a more sustainable health care system. We're both excited and proud to be partnering, partnering with Macquarie University in this important area of work and I think there's a real likelihood of it feeding into an important piece of public policy in the area of primary health. We're all most impressed with the expertise that has been assembled under the guidance of Professor Scott Koslow and his team in the Faculty of Business and Economics. And on behalf of the ASMI team, it's been a real pleasure working with you and I think the preliminary findings from our work to date are very encouraging and give us great confidence in the entire team, the professionalism and the rigour of your research. I would like to thank Professor Gabbett for your support and for hosting us here at this lunch today. And uh, to all our guests, thank you for participating today. This is an area of research that uh, touches all of us and I'm sure we'll be interested in the results as they unfold. And I can assure you that um, we will keep up the dialogue around our work in this area and share our key learnings as we proceed. So thank you again. We're delighted to be formally launching this research agreement today and I'm sure it marks the start of a very successful long-term partnership between our two organisations. Thank you.